62.9 billion is broken down into a capital budget of 252.7 billion and 102.1 for personnel and 8.1 billion for overhead costs. These are the appropriation for uh, the agriculture and food security sector for the year 2024. Uh, this is bringing us to a topic for this week, which is um, uh, government expenditure on agricultural production in Nigeria, with a focus on the budgetary allocation for uh, the sector. It has been long established that public spending in the agricultural sector is a recipe for national growth and development and is decisive in achieving the objective of food security and job creation in the country. As part of efforts of the government to hit the ground running, the National Assembly recently passed the 2024 Appropriation Bill of $28.7 trillion, increasing it by approximately $1.2 trillion from the initial $27.5 trillion proposed by the executives. However, it was noted that the total breakdown of the budget uploaded on the website of the Budget Office of the Federation summed up to $24.1 trillion only. This means that there is a shortfall of $4.6 trillion that is yet to be updated. Nevertheless, this analysis is focused on the agricultural sector's budget, specifically on the budget of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security and associated MDAs and all reference are to the budget document on the website of the BOF. The amount appropriated to the agricultural sector in 2024 is 362.9 billion broken down into a capital budget of 252.7 billion, 102.1 for personnel and 8.1 billion for overhead cost. Firstly, it is important to note that the 362.9 billion for agriculture is approximately 1.2% or 1.5% of the total national budget depending on the gross amount used. It is against this background that I argue that the agricultural sector in Nigeria is hugely underfunded and the amount falls below the CADA benchmark. You would recall that in 2014 at Malabo, African heads of state recommended to allocate at least 10% of their national budget to the agricultural sector. Unfortunately, Nigeria has been trailing, consigning, failing this commitment. For the past seven years or more, the budget for the agricultural sector has not exceeded 2%, besides establishing low funding for the sector. What is more important is what the $362.9 billion will be used for. Technicalities when it comes to the world of agriculture when in Nigeria. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, we've seen is um, the budgetary allocation uh, for the year 2023 came with so much uh, uproar. Uh, you know, stakeholders uh, complained that um, it was too small. If at all, federal government they has a sincerity of purpose, they want the sector to move, something needs to be done, and the rest of it. And um, yes, um, this administration came on board with so much zeal that um, the sector, uh, you know, should be put um, in place uh, in the path where it can take back its glory. And then we see that this year, uh, the allocation increased with some, uh, you know, few, uh, even though that's a mile when it comes to the sector. Now, government expenditure, let me start with that. Is this tallying with the results we get? Uh, looking, looking at 2023 first. Looking at uh, government expenditure as we regards the results that is coming out from the sector, you will discover that uh, Budget allocation to agriculture in 2023 was around 224 billion, which is about 1% of the national budget in 2023. You also discover that uh, most of the activities that were channeled by, uh, by that were controlled 
by the government in agricultural space in 2023 was more as a result of uh, other interventions by governments, other interventions like uh, from the central bank and some other uh, multilateral agencies. So those are the things that uh, when you look at it, you see that even the budget of government in 2023 was not completely implemented. You discover that uh, the budget can be said to have achieved maybe between 60 to 70 percent implementation. And uh, when you have a budget of 1 percent of uh, the total annual budget for agriculture, you can, you can assume or determine how far it can go when it's not even fully implemented 100 percent. So you discover that more of the successes that were recorded in agriculture in 2023 was as a result of uh, a collaboration of other uh, uh, government agencies like the central bank uh, and other uh, multilateral agencies that has to do with agriculture in supporting the sector. And that's why we have seen a, a little improvement. Coming to 2024 now, you look at the government allocating about 362 billion of the annual budget to agriculture, which is still around the range of 1.2 to 1.5 percent of the total budget, depending on the calculations that have been used. So looking at that, you discover that the government has not taken the quantum leap that is expected to cause an agri-revolution -revolu in this country. And if we do not take that quantum leap, we will just be moving on a snow snail pace to achieve what we ought to achieve in a couple of years. So looking at uh, agricultural benchmark as regards budgetary allocation, even among African countries, it is subjected to the fact that for agriculture to really, really make impact in Africa, for example, uh, national governments should at least earmark 10% of their budget to agriculture in the next seven years. But that has not been done because we have seen in the past years that the highest agriculture has gotten in Nigeria in the past eight to nine years has been 2%, and which has not even. So we have been scratching the surface, and the government expenditure has not really brought agriculture to the level where we will be able to ensure that it achieves its aim of food sufficiency and uh, uh, agri technology and agri economy that Nigeria should be. Nigeria is an agrarian country that has not tapped its resources fully in that area. And until we start looking inwards, making adequate budgetary allocations and implementing the budget, we might not get to the level whereby we'll stop uh, the importation of some of the products that could easily be cultivated and harvested in Nigeria. Okay, so um, you talked about um, the low uh, budget reallocation, which is one major problem like all oh, our stakeholders have always um, had to form. Now, looking at 2024, we see yes. that um, the allocation increased for, uh, should I say, less than a percent? Yes. yes. If we move in this space, how, how do we move with the whole, um, you know, uh, food sustainability drive that we talk about? Now, uh, another thing I want us to understand in the context of uh, our discussion this, uh, this day is that it is not all about budgetary allocations, but it's more about where and where it is being channeled. A situation just like you mentioned when we started the program, where capital expenditure is taking so much and recurrent expenditure is taking far more than capital expenditure shows that we are not serious. But another aspect that I'm a bit more comfortable with is the aspect of agri-financing that according to 2024 budget will take about a 102 billion, which is about the 28% of the total uh, agri uh, uh, budget. That is a little comforting in the sense that if we really want to expand our reach, we need to improve on agri-financing. And if government is ready to earmark so much to be able to tackle the problem of inadequate capacity uh, uh, fund, funding, inadequate funding in agriculture, it will really help and it will ginger the private sector to also come and bring something to the table. Because we have discovered even in other uh, countries that agric is well developed, 
it's not only the business of government. It's a combined, uh, uh, combined vision and combined resources and energy that brings out the best results when it comes to agriculture. But the government needs to lead the, the line. And that is what agri-financing can do. And bringing about 102 billion for agri-financing is not so much, but it's a right step in the right direction, if properly implemented, to be able to channel it to the right places, to be able to enhance capacity, to be able to ensure that smallholder farmers increase their capacity to improve agri-production, to be able to channel a part of it to research and development, to be able to channel a part of it to value addition and uh, associated agri uh, uh, agricultural outputs like fertilizers and the rest. It will really help to be able to put agri on the map. We have seen that with little allocation, agri is contributing so much to the GDP. If we now bring improved allocation and uh, correct implementation of that allocation, Agri is poised and has the capacity to do far more than what it's doing presently. So the government not only needs to look at the area of budgetary allocation, but must look critically at implementation of the budget. Okay, I know sometime on this program we talked about, um, um, you know, talking about um, um, agri-financing, where government gives out incentives and loans to farmers yeah. and the rest of it. I uh, know that um, this one point one hundred and two uh there about um, billion that is going for agri financing. Yet um, we still see that um, some farmers, genuine farmers, still complain mm -hmm. of not getting support and fund. Now, is there no way that um, we can come out of the ordinary and say, so to say, um, instead of financing them with this money? Get this equipment, get the equipment, and then um, maybe the look. I know that there are some some states are already doing such um, yeah. uh, this thing. But how do we do the checks and balancing in ensuring that Mister A does not go and collect this thing and take uh, it back to the market? One thing I want to I want to uh, take us back a bit to the era of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan uh, in uh, two thousand and. Uh, before 2015, you discovered that at that time we had a very prolific agricultural minister in Mr. Akinwumi Adeshino, who is now the president of African Development Bank. He came up with very ingenious policies that could actually drive agricultural improvement. At that time as well, uh, the budgetary allocation was not more than 2%, it was not even up to that. But there were initiatives that were put in place that directly attended to farmers' concerns. These initiatives were tailored in a way that the man-no-man -man syndrome was uh, almost eradicated. It was tailored in a way that every farmer that is a farmer will one way or the other be able to benefit from uh, incentives or agricultural incentives in government. It was also tailored in a way that you could see genuine partnership between the government and even like, uh, commercial uh, uh, agricultural practitioners. So what I'm trying to say is that apart from government intention, good intention, in ensuring that uh, these agricultural allocations, uh, budgetary allocations and financing reach the farmers, the initiative needs to be right. And we can see that we have the capacity to initiate right procedures like we saw during this time. Because at that time, he ensured that every farmer will have one kind of uh, phone, even if it's the cheapest of phones. And there is a code that will be sent to every registered farmer when it comes to fertilizer distribution to state the number you will get. There is also a code that will be sent to every farmer when it comes to seedlings allocation and improved allocation. And also for those that were slated for agri-financing uh, financial, uh, financial capacity, there were also ways that it was done that almost completely eradicated man-no-man -man syndrome that we find in agriculture where people that are not farmers or practitioners tend to benefit even to the detriment of uh, actual farmers. So initiative is very key and uh, it is the initiative that can lead to correct implementation of government's plan and policies when it comes to agri-financing, for example. We have seen, even in the Anchor Borrowers Program, that over 60% of the people that got these uh, loans 
from the, the central bank then were not uh, practicing farmers and some of them did not use it for agricultural purposes. So the less, the remaining 40% that were actual farmers were even the ones we were seeing the yield and we were seeing what they were able to do with it. And that was what even made the recovery of those loans very difficult because they were given to political farmers. So in the initiative, the method, the means of disbursement and engagement of actual farmers needs to be looked into so as to eradicate political jobbers in the process. So that is very key. Okay, yes, I need for government to uh, check up the process and see that um, there is, you know, a holistic uh, way of checks and balances. Quickly, we'll take a break and return. The program continues to check. change, I believe that uh, constitutionally it also needs to change and uh, the mandate needs to change to actually focus on the key area the name suggests, which is agriculture and food security, uh, where rural uh, development is removed. Uh, rural development, to me, even ab initial, should have gone to Ministry of Works. When we talk of development of rural roads, talk of uh, street lights, uh, those are not supposed to be within the purview of the Ministry of Agriculture and Food uh, uh, security. security. So I believe that uh, even when we were doing roads that are meant, when Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development are doing roads that are meant for the Ministry of Works, I believe one, it amounts to duplication of duties, two, it amounts to uh, uh, a form of corruption because you discover that allocations were made for some particular projects simultaneously in both ministries, even in the past. So you discover that when those allocations are made and one of the ministries eventually goes ahead and, uh, and, and execute the contract, you now see the other ministry also taking money out of it to do the same thing. So it became duplication of responsibilities 
and it took uh, 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 focus away from the real uh, agenda of government as regards agriculture. I believe that presently the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security should focus on food security in Nigeria, focus on how to get agriculture to, op or to be optimized to the level that it will generate and engender uh, self-sufficiency in food security in this country and uh, remove focus from uh, execution of contracts for street light and rural roads. We also know that uh, there are some rural roads that are within the federal purview while some rural roads are the responsibility of the state. So in as much as the federal government is carrying out its responsibility on some major roads to enhance logistics for agriculture, the state also needs to play their part to ensure that some rural roads that lead to some major agrarian areas in their states are, are properly done and fixed so that uh, it will enhance the uh, movement of goods and services from those areas. So the Ministry of Agri should be focused on how to engender continuous development in our agri sector to the extent that will rise to the level of food security. That is what they are meant to be doing presently. Okay, yes, um, uh, yes, and um, that's your thought. We hope that um, still on the program will be able to ask the minister to clear the air as regards um, uh, if the ministry still holds on to some uh, rural projects that has to do with um, um, agriculture, uh, farm place, and the rest of it. Uh, moving forward, we talked about the budgetary allocation. Looking at this year now, in person, what do you think? Uh, the there are two things that can happen this year. Apart from the, uh, uh, the budgetary allocation by government for 2024, there is a policy document that government wants to implement in 2024 for, called the Agric Revolution uh, for, uh, for, for farming uh, in Nigeria, livestock and all the rest. In that area, what it's trying to do, according to this new administration, is to provide farmlands, to provide uh, land also for uh, uh, cattle rearing and the rest, to also provide uh, agri-financing for farmers and uh, make sure there is an enabling environment. And that is why tailoring the budget towards the direction of government policy for this 2024 is very important to achieve the agri revolution and the agri policy that the government wants to aggressively pursue. So, in that state, the government has already set out a plan and there is a budget in place for that. I believe that the government should, in the process of implementing the budget, tailor it to its agri revolution policy to ensure that it becomes a success. Because this policy was formulated at the uh, inception of uh, the administration of uh, uh, President Bola Metinumbo. And uh, he also even gave the framework for implementation last year. So I see now that we are in, uh, in the, second, uh, the second month of the year, the, the, this pro yes, this, this, the first quarter. So this uh, policy should have been rolling by now. We should have started seeing it vis-a-vis -vis implementation of the budget in that regards to ensure that uh, things are on, on track and uh, we can uh, actually measure performance at the end of the day. Okay, talking about this and how it affects the Nigerian economy, um, is there a way that you talked about, um, you know, uh, government putting its policies in place and the rest of it? I ju it just crossed my mind. Is there a way that we can have, now we see, we talk about um, uh, setting uh, uh, acres untapped um, land for farmers to, you yeah. know, but we're not putting in the factor of um, insecurity and the rest yet. We give those um, lands that are within the uh, open, you know, um, the urban areas yeah. to estate owners to build estates. Yeah. Now, can, can we not have something like an integrated family, maybe um, just some acres of land within the city that you know, farmers can, can use? Uh, it's a good idea uh, for integrated farming, but you discover that Nigerians have started practicing integrated farming now, but it's still on private basis. And the government has not uh, championed that initiative because of the fact of the cost implication of it, and also uh, looking at the arable lands that have been left untapped. 
the government still believes that uh, more agriculture can still be done on those on tap lands instead of uh, segregating uh, a particular part for integrated farming. Integrated farming really is the way to go to also ensure food sufficiency and uh, improve agricultural practices as it's been uh, done in other climes. But one thing we need to know is that it's capital intensive. And when something is capital intensive, the government needs to look at the pros and cons of it to be able to know whether it wants to go into that area. The second aspect that you mentioned, which is the insecurity, uh, is gladdening to know that uh, the government is planning what we call forest guards uh, to be able to, they will bear arms, to be able to monitor and protect the forest vis-a-vis -vis even the farmlands as well. If this is properly implemented, uh, I'm not saying it will eradicate insecurity that farmers are facing, but it can limit it and it can encourage farmers to return to their farm. Because because of the incessant uh, level of uh, clashes between farmers and others and uh, other uh, 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 security challenges, some farmers have vowed not to return to the farm because of the fear for their lives. So, but when we have a level of security that can guarantee their return and their safety, uh, more farmers will return to the farm and uh, will we'll continue farming vis-a-vis -vis and side by side with integrated farming. But presently, integrated farming is a private initiative that is doing well in some of the areas that has been practiced in Nigeria. But the uh, government still believes that since we have a non variable land, that should be exploited. Uh, exploited to his uh, to the fullest and that's why the focus has not really been on integrated farming for the government thank you for joining us on the program sir thank you for having me yes we've heard it so much so much needs to be done from policy to um you know ensuring that this allocation this military allocation is being channeled to the right use and of course uh, from there we can see by the end of the year or even in the second quarter to see uh, an appraiser will come back and do an appraiser as if as to if um, uh, this um, budgetary allocation is being used for what um, it's meant for. On that note, to wrap it up on agri-economy this week, join us again same time, same station next week. Don't forget to like us on our social media page, check us on YouTube, Eric's and TV and radio, uh, search for Agri Today, Agri-economy and of course, like and watch. We're open to comments and uh, suggestions. Also, for advanced uh, bookings, you can also reach out to the contact. For now, I'll say.